Let's see, so last time we talked about digestion with total acid hydrolysis. We talked about how some amino acids get destroyed by the total acid hydrolysis. We talked about how asparagine and glutamine get turned into aspartic acid and glutamic acid by total acid hydrolysis, so it's hard to tell which of those you started with. And the, the NH2 carboxyin showed up a lot. That's right, okay. So what did we not talk about? We talked about labeling N terminus. We did not oh, we talk did that. about with the dancel terminus. Oh, okay. That's so we did the dancel chloride or the uh, Sanders reagent, but we didn't do the hydrazine. All right. Do, so for dancel chloride and um, Sanders, mm -hmm. isn't it? Aren't there like certain exceptions where like Sanger will um, also attach to lysine? That's right. And is there any exception, or was does dancel chloride attached to anything except? Well, those are not things that we should have to memorize. Those should make sense based on the reagents. So, what are we talking about now? The interminus? We were. We got into going over a little bit to, again the N-terminus again, yes. What's the electrophilic atom in the Sanders reagent? Right. And why does it make sense? We know this is going to be at the head of an arrow. Why does it make sense that this should be electrophilic? That's part of it. But how in general, how throughout the whole course did we decide who are nucleophiles and who are electrophiles? Well, electrophiles are things with positive charges or delta positives. Because fluorine is electronegative, this has a delta positive. Okay. That's how throughout the course we've identified electrophilic carbons. Electrophilic carbons are carbons with full or partial positive charges. Not only does this have this fluorine, but it's also in the vicinity of these other electron withdrawing groups. So we would expect there to be a positive charge here, which makes this electrophilic. Okay. NO2 is electron withdrawing? That's right. It's important to know that nitro groups are electron withdrawing. We learned that when we were learning about benzene substituents back at the beginning of the course. This is the Lewis structure for nitro. Even though it's not obvious from looking at the condensed notation, a nitro nitrogen has a positive formal charge, which makes it definitely very electron withdrawing. Or you could simply say, here we have three electronegative atoms that would tend to be pulling the electron density away from this carbon. So those oxygens are pulling it away from nitrogen, that's why you're saying it's electron withdrawing, right? Well, the oxygens are pulling electron density away from the nitrogen, and therefore then the nitrogen will pull electrons away from whoever it's attached to. Okay. That's right. Thank so you. the whole nitro group is going to be electron withdrawing. But again, even if we didn't know about the structure, we could simply say it looks, since we have three electronegative atoms, they, these would seem to be the type of things that would pull electrons towards them, not push electrons away. So it should make sense that this is going to be a partial positive. Actually, in the past, we haven't normally thought of fluorine as a good leaving group, but I guess it's good enough for this particular reaction. What I don't understand is wouldn't you be pulling away from the carbon that the nitrogen is attached to, opposed to the carbon next door? That's true, but if you're pulling electrons away from this carbon, that makes this carbon electron deficient, and then this carbon would try to pull electrons away from the carbon that it's next to. Okay, thank you.
So the basic reaction that's going to happen here is this. A nucleophile will attack this carbon and the fluorine will leave. I believe that's actually a two-step reaction, yeah, but to not, summarize. It's not SN2. Like yeah. It's yeah. really a lot more like a nucleophilic attack on a carbonyl, where, where first you push the negative up onto the carbonyl and then it reforms. So what really happens here first, well, anyway, but the basic reaction here is that, that we're attacking this carbon and the fluorine is leaving. Now we have to find a nucleophile that can attack. Well, what type of functional group is this? And I mean, are those nucleophiles? Yeah, that's one of the main things we talked about last time, that, that amines are, because of the lone pair, are nucleophilic and basic. So we would expect this nitrogen to attack this carbon. That's the reason why the Sanger's reagent labels, quote unquote, the N-terminus. What type of functional group is this? Amide. And amide, are those nucleophilic? No. Why not? They still have a lone pair. Resonance. There's another resonance structure where there's a positive charge on this nitrogen. So this is not nucleophilic. So will this attack the Sanger's reagent? No. What type of functional group is this? Amide, so it won't attack. What type of functional group is this? Amine. Amine, so it will attack. That's what you were mentioning earlier. The Sanger's reagent will label not only the N-terminus, but will also label the side chain for lysine. That shouldn't cause us any confusion, because it'll still be easy to tell who the N-terminus is. The N-terminus is the one that has the Sanger's reagent on its main chain nitrogen. And if you see a Sanger's reagent on a side chain nitrogen, you know that was lysine, but not, uh, not the, the N terminus. Oh, is there nothing else besides lysine that has an amine on the, carp on the side chain? I believe that's correct. I could be wrong. I can't think of anybody else that would attack Sanger's reagent. I could Sanger. be wrong about that, but that's the only one that pops into my head that would attack the Sanger's reagent. Or Dantzel. Or Dantzel chloride. Or that was what your question was. The question was, Will dancel chloride react the same way? Well, who's the electronegative atom in the dancel chloride? Yes. The, yeah, the sulfur. Why does it make sense that the sulfur would be electronegative? Because they're all electron drawing atoms. So it has a delta positive. Things with delta positives tend to be good electrophiles. And also, it definitely has a good leaving group here. So now the nitrogen could attack here. And again, this would really be a two step process. Oh, that, I think. I, well, I do not believe that this would be SN2 either. This is, again, I believe, going to be a lot like a nucleophilic attack on a carboxylic acid derivative, where first we would kick the electrons, we would kind of break right. this carbonyl-like type bond, and then they would kick down and kick off the chloride. Okay. I'm not 100% sure of that, but by analogy, this looks a lot like a carbonyl attack. Okay, so it's similar between those two. That's right. And since, so the whole point here is we don't have to guess how the denser chloride is going to react. We can see that it, it's following the same exact principles as the Sanger's reagent. It's being attacked by the N-terminus because it's electrophilic. So would we expect it to be attacked by the amides? No. And would we expect it to get attacked by the lysine side chain? Yes. So that's the way we always want to approach things in organic chemistry. Whenever possible, we don't want to memorize the facts, but try to fit them into patterns. Well, that, both the Sanger's reagent and the dancel chloride fit into that same pattern. Great. And that cysteine with the SH, um, because we see that the side chain is acidic, then again, we're not going to worry about it because it doesn't have those electrons to kick, right? You mean we're not going to worry about this attacking these? Yes. That's right. So I do not believe that sulfur is nucleophilic enough to attack these. I think that lysine is the only side chain that would attack these reagents, although I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that. I don't think that the cysteine would attack them. No. What about something like histidine, which is also... Similar? Yeah, that's like a good question. You, if you look at it, it's also basic, meaning right. it has these, and it's, it's really prone to being a positive charge. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not sure about that. You know? No, but I, I'm pretty sure the only ones we have to worry about is lysine. I mean, that's what he said in the notes, so. Okay. In the lecture. Great. Okay. Thank you. I guess because it's an and. Yeah, so in the notes that I took, the only example he gave of anybody attacking the dancel chloride was lysine. So. As a side chain. Yeah. So how does Sanger's reagent label the N-terminus? Well, after you do the total acid hydrolysis, the, only thing, the Sanger's reagent only attacks the N-terminus. So the thing with the Sanger's reagent is the N-terminus, if we keep into account this slight exception of attacking this side chain. But other than that, it's going to attack the N-terminus. So we also want to see how to label the C-terminus. All right. Yeah. 